Hi, my name is Judy Van Coyman, and you're watching Life Issues. July's show is Reach for the Moon, Daycare Consulting, and my guests are Andrea Sinagarella and Ben Gubitz. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Nice to see you. (laughs) Andrea, I'm going to start with you. What was your past professional background? Um, So my past professional background, I started out as a nanny um, up until I actually went into uh, Salem State University to get my uh, degree in early education. Um, So I have my degree in early education and psychology. Um, From there, I started working at a daycare in Medford. Um, I started out as an assistant teacher knowing absolutely nothing um, and then got all my certifications, learned a lot of hands-on training, um, got to know my kids inside and out, and then became director. Um, And once I was director, that's where I kind of decided that there was something more I wanted to do. So that's where I'm at now. And I'm a consultant for daycares, and I absolutely love every minute of it. Great. Okay. So you're going to be doing this for a while you think yeah. Yeah. absolutely yeah good and Ben how did you know Andrea well I first met Andrea when we entered our first uh child into daycare when she was three months old uh in Medford Massachusetts and she was such a teeny tiny little baby she was our first baby and there we always had those kind of And I'm sure so many parents feel this, those jitters with the first time you actually give your baby over to, uh, you know, other humans to look after them and care for them. And um, that was in early 2014. Um, And immediately, Andrea made us feel so safe and so welcome. And within the first, you know, few hours, we felt so comfortable and and that we had found a great new day home for, for our, our newest child. Hmm, Awesome. And then how do you feel she um, implied as an educator? Andrea was, uh, well, the entire reason why we stayed uh, at that facility, not only uh, for our firstborns uh, daycare experience all the way up through pre-K until she went into kindergarten, but also for our second born Uh, child through pre-K all the way up to kindergarten. Much of that was largely due to Andrea. Uh, What I really appreciate about Andrea, and we have, you know, I would say on the spectrum, more challenging kids than than others. And Andrea would probably agree. (laughs) And um, what I really appreciated uh, about Andrea's style and approach was this mentality that uh, each kid was individual and different, and there isn't a one size fits all approach to uh, to teaching kids and to meet kids where they are and understand where their needs are and what specific you know issues they might have, whether that's behaviorally, whether that's you know uh, learning wise. And Andrea um, was always so great at uh, going the extra mile, figuring out what the kids needed, figuring out how to. Uh, made sure that the the children and the parents, you know, had the best experience. And so, you know, it was it, it was refreshing and it was innovative. And um, she would always um, provide, you know, great feedback on things that we could have been doing that, that we should be doing at home as well as in the daycare to um, have that synergy between home and and in the facility. And so um, it was it was quite unique and and something that we heard from other parents that that other uh, teachers and directors did, were not doing. And it was really great. Awesome. Great. Andrea, how long have you been doing this profession? Um, so I was in daycare uh, for 16 years and I've been a consultant now for two. Okay. And why did you want to do this? Um, honestly, so I've always loved children. Uh, like I said, I started off as a nanny, like in my teens. Um, so I've always loved kids. I knew I wanted to teach. Um, and once I became a teacher and became a director, then it turned into a different facet of teaching. So it went from teaching kids and getting to know the kids and learning about their days to now I'm teaching the staff how to be the best versions of themselves. And in being a teacher, 
I knew what the days were like. I knew what the struggles were. I knew what the rewards were. And I wanted my staff to have that same experience that I did and to take on the values that I had. So that's where my passion kind of came to be. And that's where I became a consultant because now I want to teach teachers how to do things that have that that result in successful days. Okay, great. And Ben, can you please discuss your experiences working with Andrea? Yeah, sure. There, I mean, there there was a long history there. Andrea and our family together were together for, um, geez, I guess seven years, uh, almost. Um, and so again, I had two, two, two children go through Andrea's program. And so number one, my daughter, Layla, my oldest daughter, who's nine now was so deeply attached to Andrea. Andrea was almost an extension of our own family, not Mm -hmm. almost was an extension of our own family. Um, and, uh, we had daily interactions with Andrea, um, you know, for sure, twice a day at pick up and drop off. And Andrea would was very transparent about what the kids were learning, what the goals were for the day, for the week, what the curriculum, you know, could and should be where the kids were, you know, really thriving, where the kids needed a little bit more work. Um, oftentimes there were several times through throughout that you know, throughout that period during the middle of the day where there were there where there'd be issues, um, you know, behavioral and she would really uh, approach it with such gentleness and kindness and understanding. Um, I think that what was so special about Andrea is she did care so much and so deeply about the kids um, and she really did, you know, uh, understand what it was like to be a, a teacher in, in a classroom in that in that type of setting, which was such a challenging job, I can imagine. Um, and so I think just through, you know, the compassion and the empathy that Andrea showed, um, we were always so impressed and learning, you know, definitely came first, uh, the children's well-being and safety, of course. Um, but it wasn't just uh, it wasn't just a daycare and Andrea, you know, I don't think ever subscribed to the notion to where um, you just drop the kids off at a daycare and they and just keep them busy. No, the, her approach was very methodical and and prepping them, you know, for success to once they got out of kin, uh, out of preschool and into, into kindergarten, that then they could start on, you know, on off on a good foot on and, and very successfully once they got to kindergarten. When both of our kids did get to kindergarten again, in large part due to Andrea's, you know, wonderful tutelage. Um, They were extremely prepared by the time they got to kindergarten, uh, behaviorally, uh, academically. um, And I think it actually kind of, you know, set them, you know, apart from some of their peers that may have not had that kind of care um, that Andrea provided, which is a shame because I think that that should, you know, every every kid should have that opportunity that Andrea provided to us. Okay, great. And Ben, do you feel Andrea advocated well for your children? Oh, no question about it. No question about it. She was a tremendous advocate for my kids. Again, um, you know, we were we were so close. You know, our lives were were so intertwined, and and my daughter especially, um, you know, was so connected to to Andrea on this physical and emotional level, um, and um, you know. Layla was Layla certainly had her challenges um, in terms of the ability to um, deal with frustration and emotion and perfection and all of these things that that she had as a part of part of her personality. Andrea was always helping us to strategize and how to figure out how to specifically deal with Layla as an individual not just as another kid or not just what she read in some textbook, but really, you know, zooming out, taking a holistic approach to understanding the child as an individual. And that was so important. It really did help my daughter in in her younger years, as well as my, as well as my son, Judah, um, who's seven now and in first grade, Um, neither of them were a walk in the park. Um, But Andrea certainly, um, you know, uh, advocated for them, you know, as an, as an individual, as an individual person, as a, uh, as a young, as a young human, not just, 
you know, uh, a client that was dropped off that happens to be young, which was just a really special feeling. And we felt so great and, and, and so much love there. Okay, great. And Andrea, one of your services is virtual professional development. Can you please tell us what that entails? Yeah. Um, so for professional development, um, you know, clients will reach out looking for training hours for their staff. Um, so it could be a group, it could be a one-on-one -on -one where I just train like new staff in whatever is needed by the school specifically. Um, and what I need first and foremost is a solid background in EUC licensing. Um, and then I'll take it from there, depending on what the school needs, whether it's challenging behavior, staff burnout, um, team building, um, regulation, safety, healthcare, all of that. Um, I also do curriculum um, implementation, which would involve, you know, I would come in and give them templates that they can use for their school that I've created. I can give them packets of specific curriculum things that maybe they wanted to, to do in their school moving forward. Um, but basically, it's usually two hours to eight hours long, um, you know, and I'll talk about ways to, um, you know, like Ben said, advocate for the child, make sure that they are getting the, the things that they need from the teachers, from the administrators, um, if they need special services outside of the school. Um, and I'll do that in a training, just like specifically towards like my challenging behavior one is kind of the biggest one. And I feel like I'm more close with that one as well, because I feel like um, in my experience working with hundreds of kids over the last few years, you know, it's just been I know that at the baseline, my my biggest thing in my trainings is that these these educators need to get to know their children. So that's a big part of my my professional development standpoint. Okay. And you have ongoing weekly consults, um, enrollment, et cetera. Can you um, tell us what those entail? Sure. Um, so my consultations, I call them hand in hands. Um, because I always believe that sometimes you just need to grab onto someone and, and have them walk you through. Um, I kind of put it out as, you know, I've been there. I know what I needed as a teacher. I know what I needed as a director. So I'm here to be that person that you need. Um, and it could be anything from marketing their business, setting up a budget, um, working on licensing preparation, getting ready for a visit from the licensor. Um, it could be, you know, a one week project where I just do handbooks for them. It could be, a, I had an ongoing client that I was doing all her recruiting and onboard training for her. Um, so it really varies on what the school needs. Um, I have been through it all. I've seen it all. So I basically say, what do you need? Where can I help you? And let's figure out a project plan, how long it's going to take and what exactly needs to be done so that I can get your vision to fruition. Okay, great. And Ben, do you feel Andrea fostered a positive, nurturing, welcoming environment of students, staff, and families? No question about it. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, that that's exactly what Andrea did, which made our you know experience so positive. And when Andrea says that she's been through it all, um, you know, she really has. Um, and the and the the staff really looked to her as a leader um, through. Um, Andrea's different roles within, you know, the organization while we met her. Um, and that was, you know, including through the very difficult times of COVID um, and still finding ways to um, reach out and make sure that the children felt included and together. And um, it was such, you know, such a challenging time for staff, for children. And Andrea was so instrumental in making sure that the, that the rest of the staff was taken care of and, and, and felt good about what they were doing and felt positive. Again, I know it's, it's such a, a tremendously hard, hard job. Um, but, you know, all of the various levels of the facility that our children went through, Andrew was always looked to as a real leader um, and, and, and ways to, you know, navigate very tricky situations not just including COVID, but many others, whether it was, you know, Mr. Eric or uh, Claudia, which my daughter called Lilu, or Melissa in the infant room, they all really look to Andrea um, as such a positive influence because Andrea was so great at setting the tone to be that welcoming, you know, loving and caring 
um, you know, individual that she just naturally is. Um, and so these things just come so naturally to Andrea um, that it really does, you know, set, you know, a really great standard for the rest of the organization um, and, and, and an inspiration to other teachers who may be new or may be there for a while, but, you know, are looking for new ways to improve what they're doing. And so, and that's why I think Andrew is looked to as such a leader within the, within the facility. Okay. And how do you view um, Andrea as an early childhood teacher, director, and mentor? Yeah, again, I, you know, just to reiterate some of the other points, you know, the early childhood teacher part um, is she understands children because she loves children. Um, She understands that they come from so many different backgrounds. They have so much different experiences and various level of, you know, of abilities and being able to meet them where they are and, and understand where their needs are. Um, you know, our, you know, in, you know, from personal experience, you know, our children were, I think a little bit, a little bit later to the show in terms of understanding their alphabets and general ABCs and that sort of thing. And so Andrea, um, you know, had all these great creative ways that made learning fun for the kids, but also for us parents at home and different strategies that we could use to, to get our kids engaged and make learning come alive, uh, not only in the classroom, but also at home. You know, in terms of mentorship, like I said, you know, all of the staff, you know, deeply respected Andrea. Um, and when, you know, Andrea, uh, while I don't think it happened that frequently, if she was ever out, um, it was felt. Um, and so, you know, it was it was felt because she was, you know, she had such strong leadership, you know, within within the facility, you know, and all of the teachers just, you know, I think appreciated and, and admired how how she was able to inspire others. Um, and and as you're going through and, you know, as she started off as a, you know, as, as she mentioned, as a teacher and then worked her way up through the director level, there's so much other stuff that comes with being a director. Um, and I think a big part of that is is staff support. And why that, in my opinion, why that's so important is you need to have happy teachers. And if you have happy teachers, ultimately, I think that you'll have happy children. And so, you know, with Andrea's leadership, I think that you know, the teachers that were, you know, a part of the facility, they felt that they were supported. They felt like they were learning and growing. They were excited to be there. And I think that really translated to our children being excited to be there. Um, Because again, you know, and I can't imagine how difficult and challenging the job is, but I know that it is. And it's, you know, can be, I'm sure, very hard days, great days, but also very hard days. And to have that leadership, you know, um, you know, inspire the staff, I really think translated to the classroom um, to, you know, to help, you know, shape these happy and healthy young children, especially my two, to where they are today. Great. Andrea, would this training work with any other profession? So I had to give this this idea a little bit of thought. Um, I think it would. And more than just in a daycare kind of mindset, I think because of what I do and what I believe in, I think my main experience is waking up and starting over every single day. Um, I was actually told that a long time ago by one of my directors and this guy right here that I had an uncanny ability to just keep going. Um, And because of that, I feel like in general, you need that in life. You need to be able to put your feet on the floor in the morning and have a drive, no matter how big, no matter how small. If you don't have a drive, then you're going to have a bad day. If you don't have uh, an excited kind of mindset or a positive mindset, even in the slightest, when you get to work or when you do that thing that you do every day, you're not going to want to do it. You're going to drag your feet. So I think especially in childcare, you you have to have that mindset, but you can apply that to any other area of your life or any other uh, job or career. Mm. And Andrea, what is your motto and why? <laughs> So my motto, my motto is kind of like a two part. The first is, um, you know, you have to, in order to be a good educator, you have to get to know your kids. That is my biggest thing. Um, And when I was an educator, I wanted to know 
what they liked, what they didn't like. Um, you know, I had students that preferred jackets all day long. I had students that refused to change their clothes. I had students that, you know, you can go down the list, students that needed special accommodations for noise control. Um, you have to know why. You have to know how. You have to know what the family aspect is, what the dynamics are. Um, who was over last Sunday night for coffee, you know, that could impact their whole week. Um, so you have to get to know their kids. And every day, my biggest thing was, how was their night? How was the weekend? What's going on this week? Any big events? And, you know, like, just let me know what's going on so I can prepare. You know, if there was a holiday coming up, I knew they were going to be all excited and crazy. Um, so you have to get to know how they are individually. Not every child is going to come in and love the fact that Friday night is trick or treating um, because some kids don't celebrate it, you know, um, so you have to get to know everything about the kid, about the family, about what's going on. Um, so that's part one. It's a very long part one, but that's part one. The other side of it is you need to know who you are as an educator. Because if you don't know who you are as an educator, then like I said, you're going to have a bad day. If you know your kids and your kids grow to trust you, it's you that's providing that space for them to come to you. And that's going to have your day a lot less chaotic. The kids are going to want to listen to you. They're going to want to see what you have to say. Um, you know, I, I was nothing other as, as far as I'm concerned, I was nothing other than myself. Um, you know, if I walked around the classroom with a silly hat and a loud noisemaker, that's what I did. Um, you know, and at the end of the night, I went home and said, yeah, today it was a little loud. It was a little crazy. But, you know, I got a, a hug from that child that doesn't like physical touch. And that meant everything to me, you know, um, because that child didn't like to be touched, but I got a hug. Mm -hmm. So that was just, you know, you have to it starts with the educator. If the educator gets to know their child and their students, then they're going to succeed. Okay, great. And Andrea, if anyone has any questions that we've discussed, please give us your contact info. Sure. Um, so my email address is reachforthemoon2020 at gmail.com. Okay. And you have a wonderful brochure. Um, if anybody um, would like more information, but can you email this to anybody that requests? Yep, absolutely. The brochure, great. So um, again, um, one more time for your email. Sure, it's reachforthemoon2020 at gmail.com. Okay, I'm sorry, but that's all the time that we have. Thank you both for all you do for those in need. I'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions. Please send them to lifeissuestv at gmail.com. And remember, live each day to the fullest and celebrate life.